Travelers, Boardman21 here, and today's build is the Shatter Spark. And the reason we're calling that is it is a Spellblade build that will utilize Shatter Strike with 100% crit chance to do really good damage. And then on top of it, we'll be utilizing Spark Charges. So we'll have Spark Charge chance on melee hit to apply to the enemy, and we'll be having a lot of adaptive spell damage and some lightning increased damage. So Spark Charges will hit even harder than the Shatter Strike is hitting, and that's a really good thing since we are utilizing a sword with adaptive spell damage that also gives us 200% increased crit multi inside of shatter strike and because we are using a scepter and not a wand and we don't have a two-hander we can take advantage of the 75% increased attack speed inside of shatter strike on top of it doing three hits per use of the skill so you can get a massive amount of hits you can apply a lot of spark charges and then when it comes time to get your mana back we will not be utilizing focus and Instead, we'll be utilizing ranged mana strike, which will have a chance to apply two spark charges per hit. And then on top of that, it will also be able to give you mana back from a range. So even though it's a melee skill, it will be a ranged melee. So that as enemies come towards you, you can hit them with a mana strike, get your mana. And by the time they get within melee range, you can unleash a mid-range shatter strike, which is basically just going to annihilate them and kill them before they even get a chance to throw an attack at you. And instead of having to run all the way up to enemies that are ranged like archers or axe throwers and hit them with shatter strike you'll be able to take them out with mana strike from range which means your survivability goes up a lot all right let's go ahead and get into the skills for skills i am running enchant weapon shatter strike flame ward lightning blast and mana strike for enchant weapon we have four points in Celerity, 2 points in Shivering Blade, 5 points in Frost Brand, 1 point in Frozen Sparks, 4 points in Concentration, and 4 points in Efficy. Now this is going to give you a big boost of damage, both for the Spark Charges and mostly for the Shatter Strike, so make sure to pop it before you plan on just absolutely spamming Shatter Strike on a boss or on a rare. Then for Shatter Strike itself, we have 2 points in Lingering Chill, 1 point in Breath of Cold, 2 points in Whiteout. This lets you have 2 recasts, so when you use it, you will have 3 attacks for just your 1 attack use. 4 points in Ice Blink, so that you have 60% increased attack speed. 5 points in Icy Flow for the mana efficiency and ward gain when you hit at least one enemy using it. 2 points in Shiver, and 4 points in Cold Steel, so that you have that 200% increased critical multiplier when you're using this with a sword, which will be using a sword and a scepter for all that adaptive spell damage and for all that juicy melee attack. Then for Flame Ward, we have 5 points in Star Ward Defense, 3 points in Dilation, 5 points in Infusion, 1 point in Lightning Ward, 5 points in Through Flames, and 1 point in Fire Aura. When Flame Ward's active, it's going to give you 10 added Lightning Damage and 250% increased Lightning Damage. This is going to make Spark Charges hit a lot harder. Then for Lightning Blast... The only thing you need in Lightning Blast is the 5 points in Mortal Capacitor. After that, you don't care about anything. The way I have it set up here is just to put the points in there so that no one asks where I would put them. So we have 5 points in Front Loaded, 4 points in Overcharge, 1 point in Hypercharge, 1 point in Innate Conduit, 3 points in Cloud Answer, and 1 point in Final Spark. Again, the only 5 points you need is in Mortal Capacitor, so just unlock that pathway and put your 5 points there for that Spark Charge effect, which makes Spark Charge hit a lot harder. And then for Mana Strike, we have this setup to be ranged, so we have 2 points in Swift Sap, 2 points in Rage Sap, and 1 point in Teleporting Strikes. Then we also want as much mana as possible, so we have 3 points in Sprit Blade, 4 points in Mana Drain for 80% increased mana gain, 3 points in Arcanist Blade for 9 mana added on hit, and then we have 1 point in Mana Spark and 4 points in Spark Charges. There's a 100% chance when you use Mana Strike to apply a Spark Charge with it. On top of that, you'll have 25% added Spark Charge chance in the Passive Tree for a Lightning Melee attack, which this is. And then you'll have the Idols that give you increased chance to apply a Spark Charge when you do a Melee attack. So you can get up to 2 Spark Charges on a Mana Strike hit. 
For passives, we have 31 points in the Mage Base class with 8 points in Scholar, 8 points in Arcanist, and 5 points in Mage Flurry with the final 10 points in Knowledge of Destruction. You want as much critical strike chance as possible everywhere and crit multi. We have 25 points in the Sorcerer. A lot of this is to get to that 300 mana gain so that you can double the spell critical strike chance on your helm and chest. We have 8 points in Calculated Destruction, 8 points in Mana Shell, and 10 points in Wisdom. And then with Spellblade, we have 54 points in our Master Class with 8 points in Infused Weapon, 8 points in Arcane Warden, 4 points in Arcane Shielding, 5 points in Stormblade. This gives you that 25% chance with Mana Strike to apply a Spark Charge since it's a melee lightning attack. 5 points in Essence Duel, 1 point in Gemini so we can do a Weld. 8 points in Prismatic Blade, 5 points in Awestrike, 5 points in Mana Reaver, and 5 points in Burden of Knowledge, which gives you 20 more adaptive spell damage. It reduces your cast speed, but you're not casting anything other than Flame or an Enchant Weapon, which don't really matter, so you'll be perfectly fine with the 5 points here. For items and idols, for the idols you want, you want both the 1x3 idols that have a percent chance to apply a spark charge on melee hit you can go with four of these if you have them that'll give you the greatest chance to apply a spark charge on every hit or you can do what i do and do two and two the other two will increase your melee elemental damage and increase your lightning damage doubled if you have over 300 max mana which is why we went for a lot of mana in this build was to break that 300 barrier so both your shatter strike will hit harder and the spark charges will hit harder of course you have to have some of these otherwise shatter strike will not apply any spark charges so make sure to get at least two idols that have the spark charge on melee hit right here we have 30 percent chance and because of that we do three hits with one shatter strike which means every use of shatter strike is almost guaranteed to put at least one spark charge on the enemy. If you have four of these, that means you'll probably get two spark charges on average with every use of Satter Strike, which is going to double the damage that spark charge would do. However, with this extra lightning damage, that increased how much damage that lightning spark would do. So it was kind of a give and take, and just decide which way that you feel plays best for you. We are wearing no uniques. For weapons, in the main hand, we have a Divine Scepter. This gives us melee physical which will make shatter strike hit hard and then we have adaptive spell damage which will make the spark charges hit hard on it we have melee critical strike chance increased elemental damage the reason we went for elemental damage is it increases both shatter strike and the spark charge damage we have chance to shock on hit and we have increased mana in the offhand we have a decicide sword which gives adaptive spell damage melee critical strike chance chance to apply frailty on melee hit and chance to shock on hit for the chest, we're going with the Celestial Robes. For the Adaptive Spell Damage, which will make Spark Charge hit a little bit harder, we also have Lightning Critical Strike Multiplier, which again will make Spark Charge hit harder. We have Increased Spell Crit, which is doubled if you have over 300 max mana, which again, when you crit with Spark Charge, which it can crit, it will hit for a lot more. And then we have Int and Dex. We have a Gilded Crown for the Critical Strike Chance with Int, Dex, Increased Spell Crit Chance, and Increased Lightning Critical Strike Multiplier. Now the Lightning Critical Strike Multiplier is not necessary to do good damage. You'll do great damage because you already have a lot of Critical Strike Multiplier without it. So that's kind of the last thing you can go for. Of course you also don't need the Int. Stacking Dex will definitely increase the damage that Shatter Strike does. So it just depends on which one you get the best rule of. Just make sure you go for the Increased Spell Crit the most. It's kind of the most important one. We have a silver amulet on for the increased critical strike chance, and then on it we have increased critical strike chance, critical strike multiplier, added mana, and added dodge. For the rings, we have two silver rings. We have Vite, Dex, Health, and Dodge. For the other ring, we have Vite, Dex, Dodge, and Health. We have a Noble Sash for the mana game. We have increased dodge rating, dodge rating on potion use, added dodge rating, and hybrid health. We have the Solar Embraces for Dex, melee attack speed. Dodge rating, hybrid health, and of course it's passive. Increased critical strike chance. Heo Borean boots for the movement speed. Int dex, movement speed, and hybrid health on it. And then of course a radiant crest for the critical strike multiplier with dex. Increased critical strike chance, mana, and health. And then for the character sheet, as you can see, not running any resistances really. We have some dodge. 
We have some armor. We have a decent health size pool. But basically it's going to be the war generation of using your skills and trying to stay range to mid range. That's going to increase your survivability. Alright, and then for the skills and the skill rotation, I like to put Flame Ward and Enchant Weapon both on auto cast. Now remember... If you don't put them on auto-cast, you actually do better by manually using them when you need them. So you save enchant weapon for when you really want to do boss damage. You have flame ward there for survivability. You spam it when you're about to die. It gives you a huge boost of ward and increased damage. And then what I do is, all I'm going to do is use shatter strike to kill enemies and run around, teleport around. And then mana strike whenever I need a bit of mana or if I'm starting to run you know, lower on mana, it's not quite full. As enemies come into my screen, I'll hit them with a mana strike to get mana from a range. So for instance, if I'm here, if I'm this far away, I can hit it with mana strike. Boom, I got some mana. That's what that dot is coming back to you. And then of course the enemies are running towards you. As they get closer, you'll spam shatter strike. And then for damage, you can see when these both go off. Shatter Strike is critting for 10 to 20k on the training dummy. Then you have these spark charges that are constantly going off that are hitting for almost 20k damage each, which is just a huge amount. And then when you want your mana back, you can just hit with Mana Strike. Now, remember, as a ranged one, it's not going to give you a huge amount of mana back, but do remember, you're doing good damage, and you can do this from a screen away. So you use a bunch of Shatter Strike, you go away, and then you can get your mana back from a distance while still applying the spark charges. Remember, you're getting one or two spark charges per mana strike, so you can see that it's still hitting incredibly hard which means mana strikes doing a lot of damage this will remind you a lot if you're playing the bone curse on the acolyte you could apply bone curse on a you could have a crit bone curse on hit with other skills you're basically kind of doing that by doing spark charges as a secondary effect with all your skills all right let's go ahead and get into some more gameplay